when you sat down with Ryan, what were the things that he was looking for from you? And what were the things that you were looking for from him to, to make this a marriage? Yeah, so for me, he was looking for a clear and concise and compelling vision for the football team of where we wanted to go and how we wanted to operate. You know, and so that's what, you know, that's what we gave him. You know, we, we're an effort-based team. Uh, we want to play with great intensity. You know, the ball is very important, as we know, taking it away and securing it. And then really being smart situational players, you know, penalties, pre-snap penalties, and then situations, third down, red zone, two minute, all those things. But that's kind of what he was looking for from, from me. And then what I was looking for from him is that I wanted to make sure that uh, we got a guy that can evaluate talent, which he checked the box there, you know, great if talent evaluator, number one. Number two is, is he mentally tough and physically tough in terms of can is he able to put the work in and is he able to do a great job with when things go uh, awry and uh, have adversity, he's able to stay focused on the job at hand. And he checked that box as well. And, and just asking around about him, getting to know him, uh, he's done a great job with that. What do you anticipate being the hardest transition from being a coordinator to being a head coach? No, I just think it's uh, it's really the, the selection process of the coaches. That's to me, is the most important thing that we're doing uh, right now and, and getting the right kind of men in here to coach our players. You know, are they are they have the mindset of being able to model behavior, you know, inspire, you know, challenge those guys, and then also encourage them through adversity and really do a good job of partnering with those players. So that that to me is the is the most pressing issue for me right now. And uh, again, we've already got one guy in the boat. You know, Luke Getze signed up as offensive coordinator. We're so excited about that, and we're in the process of getting um, some other staff members in here shortly. When it came to Getze, what set him apart from other candidates? Yeah, just his innovation, um, you know, in terms of what he's done um, as a coordinator in college and also what he's done as a position coach and then you know, elevating to passing game coordinator. Uh, he's just done a great job with that. And his ability to lead. He is, he is a leader, a leader of men, and he's going to do a great job on that offensive side. How do you teach getting takeaways? And, and I'll, I'll follow up with this. I, again, I covered Lovey Smith. We would see in practice guys are picking up the ball even when it's an incomplete pass. How do you go about teaching the importance of takeaways in practices and in and in the meeting rooms? Yeah, you're just fanatical about it. You never you never pass by a strip attempt. Um, we're always scooping all those balls and going ten yards. Uh, we are fanatical about punching the ball. And in turn, what's going to help is going to help our football team be able to protect the football. So that's 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 a you know, what, what we get from that, us taking it away, we get a team that really protects it well, too. Well, that's that's good to know. And you're teaching it, and teaching it is really key, and drilling it for the guys is important. How did you come to uh, adopt the cover two as, like, your base defense? And how have you seen it evolve, considering how many times we're seeing teams in 11 personnel? Yeah, so back in 2003, I put the defense in uh, by traveling to Indianapolis to go see Coach Dungy, and I would you know come up here uh, to see the Bears. Um, and what we did was we put that in uh, way back then. We were at Missouri, and our and our program took off uh, from there. And then what happened is is that then I, I go to the pro pro game, and now the game has evolved. And we run a little bit of that, but that's not our main coverage anymore. We're, we are, have different coverages, different coverage variations, um, and the ability to play different types of shell defenses. Uh, so that, that's where it's kind of evolved to, and we've become a, more, a little bit more complex, but still simple in the rudiments of our game that we want to play fast, physical, and take the ball away. I've heard stories about you teaching players and, and trying to sit them down to understand what it is that you want to do philosophically. And all the reports that I've heard have been you're really good at breaking things down for players. How do you go about stressing to them the importance of things that you want done and getting them to not think versus them just reacting to what it is that you they're seeing on the field? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and really, it, it, it comes down to giving them a clear vision a picture of what you want to have happen on the field and just coaching them to that and then also giving them the reason why and showing them why. Why would you ask me to run all the way across the field to to the ball coach? Well, it's because every player is stripping at it and that ball could be yours if you just hustle. 
and I show them the examples. I have lots of it, lots of tape to show them, and it's really about winning. That's winning football, and that's what we do. Do you think the defensive coaches have the ability to reverse engineer offenses, meaning you see great offenses that you have to attack as a defensive coach? Do you think that that gives you insight on how to build an offense? Absolutely. I absolutely do believe that, and that's a great way to, uh, to say it. Um, it's like a dual education that we're going to give the quarterback, and we're also going to um, – I'm going to be over in the offensive staff helping them – you know, understand techniques and fundamentals of certain coverages and the tells that the defense gives things away at. And then how can we attack that offensively? And then how can we attack that, as, you know, in our quarterback play? So I'm excited about, you know, working, you know, with Luke and the offensive staff uh, to be able to do that um, this offseason leading up into the OTAs. When you turned on the tape of Justin Fields, what did you see? I saw an athletic quarterback that's a really good deep ball thrower. Um, and he's got a lot of potential ahead of him, and we're just going to uh, work him. He's, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, he's like a, a second-year player that's just on the rise, and we're excited about getting to work with him. What types of things have you learned with Frank Reich, and considering his background both in the league as a player and now as a coach, when it comes to developing that particular position? Yeah, it's it's really what Frank has has done um, through the course of his career. And I've always uh, bounced ideas off of him through the eyes of the quarterback. You know, so that's what he's always taught me is that, hey, uh, the concepts, the pass concepts are through the eyes of the quarterback. You know, the run action through the eyes of the quarterback. And that's an important piece because we develop our defensive game plan the same way. How do we defend the pass through the eyes of the quarterback? So the game is all about that. You know, and it's it's never really about one player, though, because we're going to uh, do a really extensive job of developing our roster from, you know, position A all the way through. Um, and that's an important part to the coaches. Um, they're, they're teachers and developers developers of our talent on our football team. Matt, why do you think now was the time for you to explore being a head coach? Yeah, I just think every move that's ever happened uh, in my career – um, I've, I've walked up the doors uh, many times, and they've stayed shut. And I walked up to certain doors, and man, they just open. And and to me, that that's uh, my faith, um, and that's that to me is so important to me. And that's it just happens, and it's just at the right time, at such a time as this, that door just opens up. Were you worried that it wouldn't open up for you? Uh, and it's the human condition to, to certainly worry and distress about things, uh, but when you stand on solid ground. Uh, you have strength and conviction in what you want to get done. That door opens up and you step through with passion. And that's what we're, we're uh, ready to do. Outside of football, it seems that you draw inspiration from a couple different places. Where, where else do you look when you're trying to figure things out? Yeah, I just I want to have a common sense approach. I really do. I understand what wins football games, what the rudiments, the fundamentals of the game of football that hasn't changed since 1920. It's still the same. And my common sense approach is going to be in the details of what we do and the habits that we perform on a day-to-day -day basis. And those will be looked at, evaluated with, with great detail. And uh, we're going to keep beating that drum until we get the habits the right way. And I call them habits for victories. And that's what we'll do.